Year 10 and 11, welcome to your analysis of the poem Kamikaze by Beatrice Garland in preparation for your AQA English Literature Poetry Exam. Your first question might be, um, what does kamikaze mean? Um, kamikaze, um, were, they were pilots, a squad of young men who crashed their aircraft into Allied ships in World War Two. They... Um, were part of the Japanese army and they believed in sacrificing their own life for their country. So they would um, fly their planes into the ships of Britain and America, etc. In order, obviously, to destroy them, cause damage, um, kill the enemy, if you like. Um, by doing this, they were highly respected by their country um, and by the, by the people, obviously, of Japan. So the poem, it's quite a long poem, so here we go. Her father embarked at sunrise with a flask of water, a samurai sword in the cockpit, a shaven head full of powerful incantations, and enough fuel for a one-way journey into history. But halfway there, she thought, recounting it later to her children, he must have looked far down at the little fishing boats strung out like bunting on a green-blue translucent sea. And beneath them, arsing in swathes like a huge flag waved first one way, then the other in a figure of eight, the dark shoals of fishes flashing silver as their bellies swivelled towards the sun and remembered how he and his brothers waiting on the shore built cairns of pearl grey pebbles to see whose withstood longest the turbulent inrush of breakers bringing their father's boat safe. Yes, grandfather's boat, safe to the shore, salt sodden awash with cloud-marked mackerel, black crabs, feathery prawns, the loose silver of white bait, and once a tuna, the dark prince, muscular dangerous. And though he came back, my mother never spoke again in his presence. Nor did she meet his eyes and the neighbours too. They treated him as though he no longer existed. Only we children still charted and laughed. Till gradually we too learned to be silent, to live as though he had never returned, that this was no longer the father we loved. And sometimes she said he must have wondered which had been the better way to die. So first of all, what is the poem about? The poem is about a kamikaze pilot. And he goes on his mission during the war, obviously, and with him agreeing to be a kamikaze pilot, he will have been expected to give his life, to, so to fly his plane into an enemy ship, um, obviously killing himself in the process. Um, on the journey, we get a re like a description of natural beauty, so the fish in the sea, and we, uh, we hear what he um, describes. And in this moment, he changes his mind and decides he's not going to complete his mission which is to obviously um, kill himself for, for his country, for Japan. So he does not give his life, but rather he returns home. When he returns home, everyone, his neighbours, uh, his wife, everyone is ashamed of him and they don't respect him anymore and they don't even want to look at him or talk to him. So what structural devices does the poet Beatrice Garland use? She uses seven regular stanzas. We've got to be asking ourselves why and what that adds to the interpretation. She uses free verse. The poem does not rhyme. Again, we've got to ask ourselves what does that add to the meaning and interpretation. And finally, she uses a lot of enjambment. Again, what does that add to the poem? So, again, this is just ideas. Um, if you have your own interpretation about the structural devices, go for it. Um, remember, poetry is all about interpretation. So... The poem uses seven regular stanzas, which reflects the strict, root, strict routine of the military. The rigid order contrasts with the chaos of war. The regular stanzas also reflect the tradition of the Japanese army and the specific tradition of using kamikaze pilots and the idea of risking your life for your country. So the stanzas here, the seven regular stanzas, represent this tradition, this rigid tradition that the Japanese army follow um, follow to the letter the free verse creates a serious tone and represents the lack of freedom the pilot has when he is in the middle of his mission it also represents the hostility he faces when he returns home and how his life is effectively ruined so remember that the pilot loses his freedom in this poem and i think that's what the free verse symbolizes he loses his freedom when he returns home because Everybody is ashamed of him and nobody wants to speak to him. So he's he's very much trapped because of the choices he has made. But he's he also um, doesn't really have much freedom when he's in the army because of the, the orders and the duties that they have to follow. Enjambment, the poem flows quite rapidly. 
and this represents the movement of a kamikaze plane as it spirals quickly downwards um, as you know as it heads towards its target it also represents the spiraling out of control of the pilot's life when he defies tradition again just ideas use them feel free to use them if you've got your own ideas add them in um, as long as you uh, can support them with ideas associated with the poem on to language. So stanza one. Her father embarked at sunrise with a flask of water, a samurai sword in the cockpit, a shaven head full of powerful incantations and enough fuel for a one-way journey into history. So um, the verb embark there, um, it has a possible double meaning, to board the plane or to embark on a new adventure. Um, it has positive connotations and suggests that he does this willingly. So the problem we have is that he willingly agrees to be a kamikaze pilot and to sacrifice his life. And then obviously the, the problem is that he doesn't. And that is why when he returns home, the Japanese uh, the Japanese people shun him and they don't want to talk to him. He's lost all respect. And respect is a massive word in Japan. Um, a samurai sword, so that, you know, it kind of tells you, that, tells you um, the heritage of the culture. Um, shaven head, full of powerful incantations. So the, the soldiers shaved their heads as part of a ritual that demonstrated their readiness to go to battle, as well as the fact that they were going to remain dignified even in the face of death. And obviously uh, the irony here is that he doesn't, he doesn't die, he doesn't give up his life um, for what he believes. He changes his mind. Um, a one-way journey, obviously. Um, it's a one-way journey because they would crash, in, crash into the enemy and, and naturally they wouldn't return. So again, there's an irony there because he, he does return, and there's a change in tone later on in the poem, which I'll come to. Uh, the journey into history um, highlights the honour and recognition that the pilots received. As I said earlier, respect is a massive thing in Japan, and these pilots were highly respected and highly highly thought of for giving their life for their country, and so that, that's how they journeyed into history. They would never be forgotten, and this man, um, sadly, I suppose to some extent will be forgotten because he didn't complete uh, his duty so he isn't a kamikaze pilot and won't be memorialised if you like stanza two halfway there but halfway there massive change in tone there she thought recounting it later to her children he must have looked far down at the little fishing boats strung out like bunting on a green blue translucent sea so but halfway there a change in tone this is when he realises that he's doubting the mission or, or doubting the fact that he can give his life and he's not going to. So the poem changes tone there. And um, you can see that um, the conjunction, but she thought uh, the pilot's experience is interpreted, interpreted by other people, obviously. Um, so we're hearing what someone else thinks of the pilot. So it's speculation because he doesn't explain what he thought, which is interesting because then we can only guess um, we can only guess at his thoughts and um, and why he changes his mind. Um, recounting it later to her children, he must have looked down at the little fishing boats strung out like bunting. Um, so the modal the modal verb must, okay, modal verb must, because it's repeated later, creates a bond between the pilot and the narrator. It's an attempt to justify his actions. The narrator is aligned with the pilot and shows sympathy towards him, and that's what they want the reader to do. And um, we get the simile strung out like bunting on a green blue translucent sea. Um, bunting we know is associated with celebrations, which contrasts with the main ideas of war and death. Um, also, it encourages us, the reader, to think about what the pilot will lose. Um, and when we think about what he will lose, it, it, you know, it's a massive burden because not only is he he's risking his life, which also means his wife and his family will have to have to live without him. It is a massive burden. Um, so this simile, like bunting, it's a celebration in terms of the Japanese people celebrated their kamikaze pilots and and thought of them as heroes. But we know that he obviously doesn't feel that way. Stanza three, beneath them. Uh, so if you if you have a look at stanza three here, what we've got is a lot of um, S sounds and F sounds. You can see them there, you know, no need for me to, to read it out to you. You've got S sounds, 
um, F sounds all the way through this stanza, okay? Um, and this creates pace and it is mimicking the movement of the aircraft as it plummets down um, into its target. It's supposed to recreate that. Now, again, if we look at the verb swiveled, if we look at the verb swiveled here, um, it is obviously the action um, of the plane as it spirals into a ship and obviously will explode. So stanza three um, represents the movement of, of a kamikaze plane as it hits its target through the alliteration of the S's and the F's and the verb swiveled. The narrator recognises that, um, that the natural beauty that the pilot witnesses has discouraged him from taking his life. So for instance, the fishes that he describes, the shoals of fishes and their silver bellies, um, the way he watches them, like a huge flag. Look at that simile there, like a huge flag. Waved first one way, then the other, and a figure of eight. So he watches he watches nature, doesn't he? And decides that um he can't go through with with his mission um and changes his mind. So we have the power of nature here. Um like a huge flag is weird, isn't it? Because that's patriotic and I'm not saying he's not patriotic, but um he hasn't followed the duties that his country have expected of him. So, he st yes, he's still probably patriotic, but the irony here is uh, is he hasn't fought for his country in the way he said he would. Stanza four. Remembered how he and his brother's waiting on the shore. So, again, we've got a memory here. So, when we're talking about him changing um, his mind, it's natural beauty and it's it's possibly the memory of of um his life uh, his family um the uh the shore built cairns of pearl grey pebbles that is a mound of rough stone that is a memorial or a landmark so again when we're talking about something being memorialized the irony is that he won't be because yes okay he's fought in the war but he hasn't uh, fulfilled his uh, his role um, as a kamikaze pilot we have a mixture of vocabulary here we have turbulent and then we have safe and obviously those two words contrast and I think that that highlights the turmoil and the confusion of the pilot you know you can imagine him thinking well you know I've got, I've, I've got to complete my duty but I'm absolutely petrified of going and killing myself and if I go and kill myself I'm going to miss out on so much that the world and my life has to offer so it's this the, the vocabulary of turbulent and safe I think is massive here because it's emotive and it shows us that he, he doesn't know what to do and what choice to make and he couldn't win really because the choice he does make leads him to a life of silence and a life of exclusion Lack of punctuation in this uh, poem as he recalls childhood memories which overtake his ability to complete the mission. So the enjambment here and as, as this stanza carries on it builds up this lovely memory he has of his family um, and we realise that um, he, he definitely can't complete the mission because um, his life away from war is too important. Stanza five. Yes, grandfather's boat safe to the shore. Again, we have the idea of safety here. Um, the emotive word safe obviously shows us that he returns home, um, which then highlights that a lot of men didn't. And then we have almost a sense of betrayal here. You know, we ask ourselves, has he betrayed the army? Um, has he betrayed his men? We hear about the shore. We again get natural imagery through the mackerel, the crabs, the prawns, um, the tuna fish, um, it's interpretation as to why you think fish are used um, as an image here. Is it highlighting weakness? You know, if we're talking about the animal kingdom, fish are probably quite weak um, in terms of defending themselves. Is that what it is? Is it highlighting that he's, he's through weakness, made the choice to return home? Or is it just natural beauty? Is it just all the things he feels he's going to miss out on um, if... If he kills himself, my grandfather's boat suggests he might have been a fisherman. So is it is is it the life he's abandoning by killing himself and the life that he doesn't want to abandon? Because remember, um, he does return home. Stanza six. Again, I think there's a massive change in tone here. And though he came back, listen to that, and though he came back, change in tone. So he's returned. So there's a disappointment there um, in, that, in that phrase. 
and it changes the tone again. My mother never spoke again in his presence, nor did she meet his eyes. Massive uh, ten sentence there, isn't it? Which builds up tension, it builds up suspense, it builds up emotion. That we as a reader think that the you know the wife would never speak to him again. She won't even look at him. She is disgusted by his actions. She is embarrassed. She is ashamed. Um, so she excludes him from family life by not speaking to him or even looking at him. And then we hear that the neighbours as well treated him as if he no longer existed because they are massively ashamed. I did say at the beginning that respect is something massive in Japan and they, they took their kamikaze pilots very seriously. Um, so when he returns home, and I think this is the saddest part of the poem, nobody will speak to him, nobody will look at him, even though he has taken part in the war and tried to defend his country. Um, everybody's disgusted and ashamed of him. Only we children still charted and laughed. So we've got a difference here between the adults and the children because naturally the children um, don't understand, really. So when they see their father, they... Uh, they still love him as he is until stanza seven when once again we have a change in the poem and the last stanza so i did say there would be another change in po uh, in tone here listen till gradually we too learned to be silent to live as though he had never returned um Interestingly, be, interestingly here, Beatrice Garland has used the commas now earlier we were getting no punctuation as we had the build up of the childhood memories now she uses commas to stop the poem on purpose because these lines are um, massively important because the children have now decided that they won't speak to their father anymore. So listen again. Till gradually we too learn to be silent, to live as though he had never returned, that this was no longer the father we loved. It's, it almost reads as a triple um, and it's bang, bang, bang. We've, we're not going to speak to him. We'll pretend he's not there. It's not our father. And the poem comes to a massive ending in terms of despair, um, sadness. The adjective silent builds up that, that horrendous tone to the end of this poem. Once again, we get our modal verb must, which does um, solidify that bond between the pilot and the narrator because it is his child, isn't it? Um, or it's a grandchild, depending on... Um, who you think the narrator is, it appears to be an attempt to justify his actions. He must have wondered which had been the better way to die, because remember, he doesn't speak. Everyone's just speculating as to his thoughts. And it sounds desperate, doesn't it? There's a hint of desperation in the tone here, because it's almost as if the narrator wants us to feel sorry for the pilot. Now, again, that's your interpretation as to whether or not you feel sorry for him. Um... The last line has a huge impact. Okay, this is how the poem ends, remember. Now listen. And sometimes she said he must have wondered which had been the better way to die. So the question left for the reader then is, would it have been better for the pilot to take his life in the kamikaze fashion than to return to this? Because he's come back to his life, that right, we've heard about, about the fish, the natural beauty, wants to return to his family. Um, he returns to this. Nobody speaks to him. Nobody looks at him. The children learn not to speak to him. The children learn to act as if, as, as if then he's not he's not their dad. So the poem ends tragically with a question of, would it have been better if he had killed himself in the war? Again, that's a question you have to ask yourself, um, as the reader. But yes, the poem. Uh, from beginning to end, I think, is is extremely sad. Um, and, and, and you've got to try and put yourself in the pilot's position, which is impossible to do, because we, in our lives, we're never going to be in this type of position. Uh, overall, I hope this video was useful. Uh, don't forget, watch it again, go back, pause it, make the notes that you need. If you need any more of my poetry videos for AQA, um, Type my name into YouTube, which is Stacey Ray, S-T-A-C-E-Y, and Ray is R-E-A-Y, and if not, good luck in your AQA poetry exam.